Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Elder Scrolls Online build video with me Sherman. Today is going to be one of the last days I release a build. I'm going to release a build tomorrow for the while the patch is going in, but uh, that's just going to be the last build I release. So I'm going to be releasing this build and one more. So this is the Adventure and <laughs> there's a reason why it's called the Adventure build is because it is a solo play build only. This is not made for heavy group play. It can work in groups, but it works really good as a solo play build, and it's designed for it. So this is for any overland content you want to do. If you want to play public dungeons, you want to play delves, you want to play world bosses, you want to you know play in the open world itself, even in Cyrodiil, this build works but only if you're playing the PvE side of it. When you go into PvP, you will get annihilated. <laughs> now, you can set it up for PvP, but you have to use in-pin gear, and there's just it, it just takes away too much from the build, to be honest. But it could still work in PvP. It's a really fun solo play build, period. And yes, I tried other races with it, and the only race that seems to work really good with it is the Wood Elf. If you try to use a red guard, you get good sustain to a degree, but you lose out on the the benefit of what the Wood Elf gives you, and that's the greater stealth capabilities. Because, like I said, it's a solo play build, and there's sometimes where you need to stealth. So it's it's good to have that extra stealth capacity in it. And so let's go ahead and take a look at the build itself. Starting with the stats, as you can see, we have a 21k health on the sword and board bar. That's right, running sword and board on this build. Because after t testing, like, I tried two-handed, it was okay, but it didn't give you the survivability. I tried um, dual wield, didn't give you the survivability. Sword and board gives you the, a good amount of survivability with a good amount of extra benefits while you're on the sword and board bar. So... As you can see, 21k health, 34k stamina. We have a 2769 weapon damage with a 58% crit. We do run, um, with the sword and board, we get 16k spell and physical resistance. So just on the sword and board bar, we have that much resistance. And it's, it's, it's really powerful resistance. Because it gives you so much more than what you would have if you're running dual wield or two-handed. On top of that, you do get the block cost reduction with the shield, so it kind of helps with solo play. Moving on, we are running the Thief Mundestone. I tried the Warrior Mundestone, but it doesn't work. You lose so much in crit that it just doesn't give you the greater benefit. We are running Expert Hunter on our bar. I tried running potions with this. Um, again, it just doesn't work because you have the Betty Netch up that gives you the extra weapon critical. and stamina just regular stamina potions seem to work better the ones that give you stamina and stamina recovery because it gives you another 20 percent wild guardian you want your bear up all the time this bear is going to be your lifeblood for damage and it's also going to save your life a lot of times next up we have this which is tristat food i would suggest if you're playing on live the same thing to go with tristat food if you're not running tristat food run um, dubious Cameron Throne because of the higher recovery rate. And the a higher recovery rate is really going to play on this build a lot. And I'll explain why. Uh, the main reason why the higher recovery rate is going to work is because the cost of most of your abilities are about 2k. So if you have about 1200 or higher recovery rate what happens is, is when you use an ability you get half the cost back on the second cast so you'll be doing a lot of heavy attacks in your rotation you barely rarely run out of resources because you're doing heavy attacks on the front bar and on the back bar you're doing a light weave rotation so you do light weave on the back bar front front bar you're doing heavy attack and the reason why is so that way you get the full duration of your arrow your endless hail all right let's go ahead and take a look at the skills here or the gear so moving on to the gear now I've run two different versions of this I've tried it with Ranger which is amazing this is a great set for solo play one it gives you really good recovery it gives you critical and it gives you stamina so you are going to lose out on a little bit of weapon damage which is fine 
you still do absurd amount of damage. And in, um, and I say absurd, and I, I do mean absurd. We're talking bursts of 70, 80K, either way you go. So it's, it's a lot of burst damage. This is a burst damage build. So it's, really, it's a really powerful build too. So we have the, the Ranger set, which is really good, or you can run the other set, which is what I'm running, which is Knight's Errant. Now Knight's Errant's a, your hands down, an amazing set. Because it gives you max health, it gives you some stamina, and then it gives you weapon damage on the... Like, if you had this set up right, like if I had this build set up correctly, I would be running Knight's Errant Sword and Board with a bow. But <coughs> I kind of screwed up when I put it together. So here's my suggestion. If you're going to run this build, run Jewelry, Sword and Board, Knight's Errant, and Bow, Knight's Errant. The reason why Bow on Knight's Errant is when you switch bars on the Knight's Errant, you lose 195 weapon damage to your one-handed shield and sword abilities uh, and the heal from it because you don't need it when you're on the bow. You, only, you just don't need that. But you want it, the bow and the sword and board. Um, I did try this running it with like the Master or Maelstrom sword and board and Maelstrom bow. doesn't work. It, the bow gives you the benefit of the extra damage, but only it, it, it literally only raises your damage per second by about 2,000 and, and even though that's a lot it's not enough to make up for the difference of burst damage that this thing can do so Knight's Errant really plays on that heavy burst damage next up we are running five pieces of Hunting's Rage and uh, as you can see we are running five uh, medium two heavy and I went with the heavy gauntlets and the heavy boots and the Knight's Errant because that's a lot easier to get than trying to get like the chest and legs of it. Um, you could go chest and legs, but honestly this works a lot better um, to, to, to the advantage of, with chest and legs you'd have probably about an 18K, 17, 18K resistance, probably more around 17,000 resistance level, but that's still not enough to make it worthwhile. Because if you look here, I have 2,000 something, I have 2,900 on heavy. This would be 2,500 and something on heavy. So it's like like just over 2,300, 400. I don't remember exactly, but it's just, it's not a huge difference. And you want everything divines. Now I'm running the Selene set to give me extra stamina and the direct damage, um, when you deal direct melee damage, which you do a lot of, uh, you have a 15% chance to get this bear out. And this bear can do a ton of damage, along with your other bear. So between the two, you get two bears, basically, that can maul. And if you can pull off a burst, and this procs on that burst, you're going to get a lot of extra damage in there. So usually it bursts, when I burst, it usually goes off when I either use uh, one, of, one of two abilities from the sword and board, or on a heavy attack. And if it bursts on any, any of those, it's, it's going to give you the greater damage benefit. Because, like I said, this build can, can proc up to damage of 80k. And it's insane. Like, just burst in 80k. Boom. I've dropped, like, you know, dungeon bosses. And I have played normal dungeons with this build. Certain no normal dungeons, like um, Fungal Grotto 2. Uh, blah, 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 blah. A couple others, even Selene's web, <laughs> and soloed it. Uh, because this build just does that much absurd damage. Um, but yeah, Selene's plays heavily on this. You could go with Krog's, but Krog's does dam is more of a DPS, like damage per second. It's not really made for bursting, where Selene's is definitely made to give extra bursts. So you get that extra damage when you, like, not even when you really need it, but just it just happens so often that it just gives you so much more. On the jewelry, we are running two weapon damage glyphs and one reduced cost uh, stamina glyph. Now, you could put stamina recovery here, but honestly, the reduced cost is going to be more beneficial to you because you're going to save an extra 203 uh, stamina on the cost of your abilities. And some of your abilities cost like 2,500 without this. This takes it down to like 23, which saves you a little bit of extra resources, but because of the recovery difference, like I said, you heavy attack on the front bar and light attack weave on the back bar. So you're, you, you maintain your resources really well and it doesn't matter with what, uh, what you're fighting. On the sword and board we are running a Nern Honed sword with a poison glyph. This will proc every 5 seconds. It doesn't matter. It's going to proc every 5 seconds. 
So you're going to get an extra 3,395 poison damage in your stuff. Now, I have tried it with frost, fire. It doesn't matter which, what weapon damage or what glyph you're using. As long as it does extra damage, it's going to be more beneficial to you. So as long as it does fire, frost, flame, or flame, frost, shock, poison, or disease, it doesn't matter. It can be any one of those on this one. Poison and disease will work better for you because it will give you an extra 100 damage over fr flame, frost, and, or flame and shock. Frost will give you a just about the same because you get 6% more damage from frost ability or frost stuff as a warden. Moving to the back bar, we are running a bow. Uh, the bow does have weapon damage and spell damage on it. And <coughs> like I said, you, the reason you want the, the Knight's Errant on the back bar is look what happens when I switch bars. Like if I actually had this in Hundings or in Knight's Errant, this would still be maintaining 2,769 weapon damage. It, it does the same damage as the Sword and Board. Except I would get I get 5% more on Sword and Board, where this would actually be like 2,500. But still, 2,500 extra damage is way more than what I'm getting now. So you want that extra damage. Uh, weapon damage glyph on this. You want you want that extra weapon damage when you can get it. And this really helps in your rotation in how the build works. So let's go ahead and take a look at the skills. And like I said, all gear must be divines. No try stats, all stamina. Uh, it doesn't work well with tri stats. It works really good with the this. And the fact that you're running Knight's Errant Jewelry, it's going to give you, as you can see, uh, max health on the jewelry, which is going to put you at this 20k uh, when you're on both bars. And that 20k gives you greater survivability, is all it does. Uh, when you're playing in a group or something, it, you do have greater survivability over your group. It's hands down. This is like a super survival, super self-reliant build. So let's go ahead and take a look at these skills. Let me get in the line here. So looking at the main bar, we are running Heroic Slash. Now the reason I chose Heroic Slash and over Deep Slash for this is Heroic Slash gives you ultimate generation. You want the higher ultimate generation, especially for the bear uh, maul attack. You want that to go off as often as you can, especially when you're fighting world bosses. Um, or you're fighting like public dungeon bosses, or you're fighting a delve boss, and you want to get it down as quickly as possible, having that ultimate gen helps you get that barrier attack off more often. And if it does, it goes into your burst, it will do even more damage. Next up, this is how we set up our burst. This is Subterranean Salt. Now, the, this is going to be the ability you use after you start your bow rotation. Like, when you use your bow, finish your bow rotation, you're going to fire this off next, then Heroic Slash, then the next ability. The next ability we are using is Power Slam. Now, if you look at Power Slam, uh, you strike an enemy with full force of your shield, dealing 8,616 uh, 8, physical damage. If you have your Betty Netch going, this does 9k damage on the tooltip. On it, most trash mobs, you're doing upwards to 15 or 20k sometimes with this ability because of the absurd amount of extra damage it does. Now, when sl while slotted, blocking any attack, any attack while this is on your bar, will increase the damage of your next power slam by 25% for 5 seconds. So you will be blocking a lot of attacks with this build. And that's why I chose the sword and board, was because power slam is a really good, it, it uh, goes really well with the bursting of this build. When you drop this and then do a heavy attack, heroic slash, Heavy attack and then power slam. By the time you get power slam off, this is going off. And when this goes off with this, this does about 20k damage, up to 20k damage on a crit. This does up to 20k damage. So that's 40k. If your bear goes off too, that's another 40k possibly. That's 80k right there. And if your monster set procs as well, and they all fire at the same time, you can do up to a 100k DPS with this build, no problem. Because this can literally hit up to 40k, depending on how the, the, their resistances are. If this is applied to them, you get a lot of penetration. You get 5,280 on it. So you get a lot of extra damage in there on that rotation and especially if this is if you're applying this for a second time after you do the bow 
Because on the bow bar, you're only going to be there for a few seconds, literally. And by the time you come off of it, this will be coming off. You'll be firing this off, which will be reapplying it right as it comes off of cooldown almost. Next up, we have Vigor. Um, resolving Vigor. We use this just basically to keep our, our survivability. Like, to keep ourselves alive. Uh, we need a heal <laughs> in order for this build to work. And this is the best heal you can get in the game for a stamina player besides the Warden's self-heal. Uh, but that one is, one is a single-use thing, and you have to cast it multiple times. You can cast this and let it just tick through its rotation of 5 seconds. And if you have this incorporated into your rotation, you're going to be healing yourself really well. Next up we have Evil Hunter. Um, this also, by the way, I uh, just want to point this out. This really stacks well with the Knight's Errant too. Because whenever you use the Sword and Shield ability, you also heal yourself for 1,221. So you're healing and healing and healing. And this thing does not crit heal. It just heals at the 1,221. So it, that 1,221 along with the tick heals from Vigor can play really well into your setup. So let's go back to the skills. Uh, Evil Hunter, this is just there for the extra weapon critical. Because using a potion with this build just doesn't work. I've tr I tried it and I'd have to remove Betty Netch too. And Betty Netch plays into the build. So this Betty Netch are, are, are essential to the build. Like you have to have them. And if you remove them, it really disturbs the build itself. Moving on, we do have sav uh, garden, uh, the stam stamina or the physical damage one because it's going to be the best. For a stamina build, it's going to be the best for us. Also, this Grizzly's attacks do an additional, like any attack it does, does an additional 21%. And I've seen this bear hit enemies for like 9, 10k sometimes and then crit up to 20k. Like, it, I don't know how, but it does. <clears throat> so moving to the back bar on our first uh, skill here we have cutting dive this is a stamina cliff racer attack this thing hits for insane damage sometimes anywhere between 14 and 20k and I'm not, I'm not lying guys 14 to 20k it depends on how much penetration you have on them depends on how much extra damage this will do Moving on, now you can use two uh, different abilities here. You can use Poison Injection, but we don't really need it because it doesn't do a lot of damage over time. It does do a good burst hit, but s Focused Aim just gives us that extra minor fracture, which gives us that extra resist penetration that we're going to need, especially for solo play. It has a, a cast time of one second, which sucks, but it works out really well in the long run. Because if you fire this off and hit this at the same time, like right afterwards, this will fire right when this hits. So right when this hits, this will fire and hit the enemy for an extra, like, anywhere between 15 to 20k. So you can really just shred an enemy, like single target, like trash, no problem. On a boss, it really applies that extra physical penetration, which means more damage. Like I said, this build is all about burst. And it's about heavy burst. Next up, we have Endless Hail. This is just our, our only damage over time ability. And that's because it does so much damage over time. When this thing crits, it can crit up to 2, 3, 4k. Just depending on like how much damage and penetration you have on the enemy. The more you have penetration, the more damage it'll do. So that 5k you get from the subterranean assault, the 1.3k you get from the bow, and the 3, almost 4k you get from your champion points, gives you almost 10k penetration, which puts you over what the resistance level of most trash mobs, or most mobs have, in the open world, public dungeons, delves, and world bosses. So you basically strip them of all their resistances, and hit them for max damage almost non-stop. <coughs> Moving on, we have Betty Netch. Now, this gives us stamina over 25 seconds. As you see, it's a gives us 4,029 stamina over 25 seconds. You gain major brutality and major sorcery, increasing both weapon and spell damage. You don't really need spell damage. It's the weapon damage you want, and you need that stamina recovery. Next up is Evil Hunter again, and then the bear. So the, ba the way this build will work, and I'll get to like showing you in an action, but I just want to kind of go over how this build works. Like I said, it's all about the burst. You can burst on either bar. 
So as long as you're Selene's procs, you can fire this off, throw this, and they will hit at the same time sometimes. And then your bear, if it procs, your it you get so much just so much damage from the bow side and from the other side that you just have and that's why we light a weave on this side is because this is an instant cast but it takes time for it to get to the enemy this is an instant cast and takes time to get to the enemy this is a damage over time so by the time you fire like you f charge this to fire you throw the bird and you fire endless hail they all hit pretty much the same time it's pretty crazy like how how well that works I would show you guys, but most things die when these two hit. So, going on to the champion points. So, on the main tree here, or on the red tree, we have 56 in Ironclad. We get reduced damage taken from direct damage by 20%. This is going to play in both PvE and PvP because of that higher uh, damage reduction. PvE, it's really going to play well. In PvP, it's just going to help it for, for greater survivability, especially if you're doing, like, dolmens and delves over there and, like, open world stuff. Um, try to do it on the seven-day campaigns where nobody's playing. Like, just play on those. You know, nobody's really there. You can go to the delves. You can go to the dolmens. You can find all the sky shards. You can do all that with this build if your, your faction owns that stuff. If your faction doesn't and you can get with a group that and work together, this build still works in seven day campaigns really well. Moving the middle tree here, we have 56 in the thick skin. This reduces the damage you take from damage over time by 20%. Another benefit to the build. Because these, both of these stack with Hardy and Elemental Defender. And as you can see, I have 43 points in the both of them giving me 10% extra damage reduction. So not only do I get 20%, I get 30%. From thick skinned, I get 30% from Ironclad. But I actually get more than that with Ironclad because most damage you take in PvE is going to be light and heavy attacks from the enemy. And those light and heavy attacks, you can also get an extra 10% from. So this gives me 10% more on that. So when this goes to the Ironclad from the light and heavy attacks, I get a 40% damage reduction from light and heavy attacks. So I'm barely taking any damage from those things. I'm running a sword and board, which means I can block extra damage by 30, like 36% extra damage. So, or 20% extra damage. So it's, there's a lot more damage reduction in this build than what you might think because you are running sword and board. So it gives you that greater survivability. Moving on, we have 16 into quick recovery, just to give us a little bit of healing received from Vigor. All right, moving on. We have 23 into Warlord. This gives us 10% uh, break free, reduced cost. 21 into Sprinter. This gives us a reduced cost of Sprint by 13%. We are wearing medium armor. And we do have uh, five pieces of it. So we actually get more than that. We actually get almost a 20% reduced cost in uh, Sprinting. And that's really good. So. We get increased movement speed, sorry, and, and a reduced cost. So we get 15% reduced cost, or 13% reduced cost, and a 15% increased movement speed. So you get both of those. Plus you get a 20% uh, reduced cost in dodge rolling for wearing medium armor. So this is a very invasive build, too, with the blocking. So it kind of plays on both ends there. Back to the champion points. And we're going to move on to the middle tree here. We have 43 into Mooncalf. This get increases our stamina recovery by 10%. We're a, we're a high elf or a wood elf, so we get 21% stamina recovery. With this extra 10%, that gives us a 30% stamina recovery. We're also a warden. We have on our bar slotted, we have the animal companion, which gives us another 15%. So we have a 45% or 46% stamina recovery. And we're using some, he we're wearing five uh, medium, two heavy. But if we were playing the, the real way, we'd actually be using five, one, one, five heavy, or five medium, one heavy, and one light. Tenacity, 10%, uh, 43 points. Because you want that stamina recovery from the fully charged heavy attacks to be as high as possible. And right now we have a 40% return on our heavy attacks, which really keeps our resources managed really well. Especially with a sword and board. Moving on, we have 56 in the tumbling. Remember, we already get the reduced cost of dodge rolling by 20%. We have a 40% reduced cost in dodge rolling. This saves us a lot of resources when we dodge roll. Now, you're not going to be dodge rolling all the time, just when you need to, and mainly on bosses. 
Next up, we have 28 in the Shadow Ward. This reduces the cost of blocking by 12%. Remember, Sword and Board gives you a reduced cost of blocking by 36. So this actually gives us a 48% reduced cost in blocking, which saves us a lot of stamina on the blocking side. Since we are running Sword and Board, we do block a lot of heavy attacks. So you don't want to be taking a lot of damage from enemies, especially bosses. Blocking a majority of those attacks really saves your life. And this is where it plays the best. <laughs> Moving on to the blue tree. Nothing in the Apprentice. And in the Antarok, we have 35 into Expert Physical <coughs> physical Weapon Expert. This increases our Light and Heavy Attack Damage by 20%. 56 in Master in Arms, another 20%. Making our Light and Heavy Attacks hit for 40% more damage. When the enemy drops below 25% health, we get another 5% added to that. Making it 45%. Then you go over here and we get another 10% on our light and heavy attacks. Um, and our abilities get 10% more damage. So this actually adds to our light and heavy attacks, making 55% when they're below 25% health, 50% the rest of the time. We also have 40 into piercing, increasing our penetration by 3,379. Now remember when I told you we almost get four, we get five, like 10,000 uh, penetration, we get that because we get 5,280. This gives us 3,379. That together is 9,000. Then you add the 1,320, we get over 10K penetration from those three abilities. From Subterranean Assault, the Focus Saint, and this. So you get a lot of penetration with this build, lots of damage with this build, especially in open world solo play. Moving on, we have 56 in Precise Strikes. This increases our damage uh, done and our healing of our critical heals from Vigor by 20%. This is why we don't have Trap Beast on our bar. And Trap Beast is good, but honestly, with this setup, Trap Beast doesn't work as well. Because we have nothing in Thaumaturge. So with all this, we also get the Exploiter Passive, which increases our damage against off-balance enemies. With using a Sword and Board, if you block a, a, a certain attack, or bash an enemy before they do certain attacks, you can set them on off balance, giving you that 10% extra damage. On top of that, you get Opportunist. When you interrupt an enemy, your next physical damage ability used within seven seconds is it deals 15% more damage. When you set it, when you block an enemy's attacks, you interrupt them. When you uh, bash an enemy, you interrupt them. So you get those two things. On top of that, you also get this, Retaliation. When you block a heavy attack, your next light attack we used within 7 seconds deals 30% more damage. Now that 30% stacks with these and this, which comes out to 80% more damage. These ones become even more because any ability you use gets 15% more damage. 10% more damage. Because remember, anytime you, set an in you block an enemy's heavy attack, or you interrupt an enemy and set them off balance, you get both of these, along with this. So you get 30, 45, 55, and another 50. You get 105% more damage against that enemy with a light attack. And your light attacks can hit up to 10k on a crit. Now increase that by 105%. That means that light attack could hit for 20k. That's insane. So that's why this build works so well. Is It has a lot of playability because you can block an attack and set an enemy off balance. You can do a lot of other things. So let me go ahead and show you guys how this works. The rotation's pretty simple. You want to hit him with focus aim first. Throw in the bird. Drop your endless hail. Switch bars. And then go through the rotation over here. But like I said, most things die. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to go back to the house and I'm going to show you guys on the target skeleton how to do the rotation. <coughs> Sorry guys, I'm trying to get over whatever it is that's been ailing me for like three weeks now. <laughs> it's really driving me nuts. Um, but it's kind of a mix between allergies and a head cold. And it, it's just annoying how, how, it, how it's been affecting me. Because I take my allergy medicine in the morning when I get up and I still have the itchy throat from the, 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 the the chest cold or head cold and then I'm still coughing I still have a nasal drip because of the head cold and I if I take cough you know like 
cold medicine with it, I get drowsy, and it's just, it's horrible. And along, especially with taking allergy medicine, because both of them have a, most of them have a uh, thing that makes, is a sleep aid, so. Alright, so here's our target skeleton. And there's our bear, I want to make sure it's with us when we start this. So you want to start on the back part, you want to have the bedding niche up, first off. You want to hit focus aim, the bird, drop your endless hail switch bars, heroic slash, first off, heavy attack, or sorry, not heroic slash, the, the subterranean assault, heavy attack, and then heroic slash, then heavy attack again, and then this, uh, the power slam. So basically it starts like this. Focused aim, bird, endless hail, switch bars, subterranean assault, low slash, heavy attack, power slam. And that's, if you get it going good enough, you can actually pull off a lot of damage. Um, this thing actually has 18.5k health or resistances, so I'm only breaking about 10k of them. Um, so it's not really, really worth it. So. But yeah, it's a, it's a really fast build. Like you said, it has really good burst. And sometimes you can do a decent amount of damage. Now, on a full rotation of this build, if you're fighting a dungeon boss, you can pull, depending... If you're playing solo on a, on a normal dungeon, you can pull anywhere between uh, 19 and 22k DPS. If you're with a group and you have all the buffs and everything else, Warhorn, you name it, you can pull anywhere between 24 and 28k DPS. And yes, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you guys real numbers here. 24 to 28k DPS. That is crazy. Because you're running a sword and board, you're not using a lot of dots. It's all about the burst. And because you have so much burst damage, you get all this extra damage in there. And it works out really well. It works out better, honestly, with solo play than it does with group play. And that's because of the way the build works. But it's a really fun build. Really great for like just playing around in the game. If you just want to have fun, you, you don't, you don't, you're not a big dungeon runner. Um, if you're not a big dungeon runner, I would suggest Rangers because that works just as good. Except you lose a, a, a smaller, you know, you lose about 300 weapon damage in total, but you don't really notice it too much um, in the build. The rest of the stuff you can get pretty easily. Getting um, Vigor is really easy. Just play the seven day, day, day campaigns with a couple friends. Uh, capture some keeps. It doesn't take too long. You'll get your your benefits, you know. Or capture some farms. Capture some of the housing areas. Just do something to give yourself Vigor because it plays the best. If you don't have Vigor, then I would suggest using the Green Balance ability, Soothing Spores. Because this is a really good heal also. And... You can self-maintain with it, but it's not as good as Vigor, because it gives you a heal over time. But you can play with just this stuff. You do want to get the Undaunted, um, if you can. You know, if you're not playing a lot of dungeons, like I said, you can solo play, like, you can go in with a, with a group of people and play on normal uh, dungeons and get the Undaunted. And that's what I would suggest doing. But I would always only, pl I would stick to the Path 1 dungeons, and, and, you know, like, stay away from the DLC dungeons. This way you can get your Undaunted. But get your Undaunted because you want that 4% extra max health, stamina, and magicka. Otherwise, the build doesn't really benefit much from it. But if you don't have it, it's fine. You can still get by. You just lose 4% of your stamina, which takes you down to about, I think it's like 23 k stamina on the sword and board and 22 or 32 on the back. And you still have a 20k health. But a really, really good, fun build setup. And I, I've, I've, I honestly play this on, on live right now with the Ranger set, and I love it. I think it's a blast. I can do Dolmens. I can solo them. I can solo uh, world bosses. Um, I can solo, you know, public dungeons, delves. Some dungeons. Not all of them, but some of them. Um, it, and it just works out really well. Like, you're not a tank. You're a DPS. But you're a survivable DPS. And you're not a heavy DPS. You're a smart DPS. It's not that you're playing to be killed. You're playing to be survivable. 
and using the sword and board is the best option for this. I've tried using dual wield, it doesn't work. I tried using sword uh, two hand, it doesn't work. Sword and board with a bow is the best combination for this build. And that's it for the adventure, guys. So if you guys like this build, hit that like button. If you guys want to see more builds by me, you can hit the subscribe button. I will be releasing another build tomorrow, like I said. But other than that, I want to thank you all for watching. Until next time, have a wonderful day. And this guy, we'll see you all later. Bye.